Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. For today's deck, my Patreon supporters voted for Joyra, Ageless Innovator as her commander, a 2-mana 2 2-3 two, that can tap to put two Ingenuity counters on itself, and then we may put an artifact card with mana value X or less from our hand onto the battlefield, where X is the number of Ingenuity counters on Joyra. So our deck is filled with tons of artifacts, especially 2 and 4 mana artifacts are kind of the sweet spot with Joyra, and then if she happens to stick around, we can even cheat some more more expensive artifacts in play later. So turn to Jura, turn 3 we can activate, put in a 2-drop, and we've got a ton of 2-drops that can potentially also generate an extra mana the turn we put them in play. Cards like Arcane Signet that we can tap for mana right away, there's also Mindstone that enters untapped, and we even have some artifact lands in our mana base like Treasure Vault and Darksteel Citadel that can also generate a mana the turn we cheat them in play with Jura as they will enter the battlefield untapped. So we've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with mana acceleration here in the first column. So let's have a look. The goal of the deck is to first generate a big mana advantage. We've got a ton of card draw engines as well, and then we can translate all that extra mana and all those extra cards into a win condition eventually, which is the third column here. So first off, we'll take a look at our mana accelerants, where we have Renowned Weaponsmith, not an artifact itself, but can tap for double colorless that we can spend on artifacts or activated abilities of artifacts. The Mechanaut gives all our artifacts a 1 mana discount. Then we've got some typical ramp artifacts, with Arcane Signet being the best one. There's the Artificer that can tap for colorless to spend on any activated ability or to cast artifact spells. There's Cold Steel Heart and Guardian Idol, and then Mindstone, another one that enters untapped. There's Ornithopter as a ramp creature, and then there's Midnight Clock at 3 mana can eventually refresh our hand as well, so could also put it in the card draw section. There's the Palladium Mirror which can tap for double colorless. The Celestus also gives us a bit of card selection and life gain. And then some big 4 mana ramp artifacts with Firemind Vessel. Hedron Archive also enters untapped, so it can be quite nice to put in play with Joyra. And Key to the Archive also lets us draft a card from the spellbook, which can be quite exciting. And then we have a Solemn to find a basic land when it enters, draws a card when it dies. A Gilded Lotus taps for three right away. And the same with a Dreamstone Hedron, which can also be sacrificed to draw three. And then the next section is card draw, although as you can see some of our ramp artifacts also draw additional cards. There's a Witching Well for early scry and then draw two later. Glintonous Crane can find an artifact in the top four. Reality Chip can be reconfigured to turn into a nice card draw engine. There's a Maze Mind Tome and Bang Buster, which can draw a card at the cost of two mana. There's Emery, which can mill an artifact and then maybe get it back out of the graveyard over and over again. Thirst for Knowledge, draw three and then discard two unless we discard an artifact. Tome of the Infinite can also be pretty fun, as we randomly get one of the 10 cards from its spellbook if we activate it, and there's a few ways to untap the Tome of the Infinite, so we can maybe activate it multiple times in the same turn. We've got Trophy Mage to find any of our 3 mana artifacts. Typically we're going to get some of our win conditions, like Nettle Cyst, which we'll get to in a second. Then there's Padim to give our artifacts hexproof, and also draws an extra card each turn if we control the most expensive artifact in play, or tied for the most expensive. Tesseret gives our activated abilities a discount, although you do have to be careful if you tap a mana artifact, then the ability from Tesseret no longer applies. So if you're planning to draw a card with maybe a Bank Buster or Maze Mind Tome for free with Tesseret out, make sure not to tap any other artifacts beforehand. And then we can also use it for additional card selection with a plus one, and the minus two can also animate some of our creatures. We've got Joyra Weatherlight Captain, which we could easily swap with our current commander, although I think the Ageless Innovator might actually be the better one, leading to more explosive starts. But Weatherlight Captain is also great as an extra card draw engine, and of course can be built a little bit differently, including more legendary creatures, for instance, as opposed to only the artifacts which we want with Ageless Innovator. And then we also have Cosmos Elixir, can gain some life and maybe draw some cards. Mystic Forge can also be an awesome card draw engine, letting us play colorless spells off the top of our deck. Can tap it to remove the top card if it's maybe not a card we're interested in. Then as the Artifice Master at 5 mana can also draw, maybe make some Thopter tokens. 
the deck of many things, another card draw engine that can also get cards back from our graveyard, Shimmer Dragon can tap two untapped artifacts to draw a card, and also gains hexproof as long as we control four or more artifacts, which is usually not a problem. And then a Thought Monitor has affinity for artifacts, so we can often play it for pretty cheap, and then we'll draw two cards when it enters. And Seagate Restoration can be played as a land, or as a 7 mana sorcery to draw a whole bunch of cards, and then we also no longer have a maximum hand size for the rest of the game. And then we get to some of our win conditions, where at one mana there's Retrofitter Foundry, can be activated several times to make servos, eventually thopters, and then a 4-4 construct tokens as well. Then Rise and Shine we want to cast with Overload to turn all our non-creature artifacts into essentially 4-4 creatures. We've got a Nettle Cyst as a living weapon equipment, so it comes attached to Phyrexian Germ, giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control, and then can be moved around as well. There's Antiquities War, which is similar to Rise and Shine once we reach the final chapter, this time affecting all artifacts we control, so not only non-creature artifacts, and the first two chapters can also provide a bit of card advantage. Then we've got Karn to provide Karn advantage and Karnstruct tokens. Traxos can be untapped if we play Historic Spells, so nice 7-7 Trampler. There's Self-Replicator, which can make several copies of itself whenever we cast a Historic Spell, which includes artifacts as well as legendary creatures, planeswalkers, etc. We've got Combustible Gear Hulk as a 6-6 First Strike artifact creature that can also deal additional damage to the opponent when it enters, or potentially provide card advantage. There's a Godfarer Statue, which is kind of its own win condition, as the opponent will often concede to an early statue if we can ramp it out with Joyra, as it will make all their spells too more expensive to cast, and also drains the opponent for one each turn. Then Jinkataxius can copy the first instant sorcerer artifact we play each turn while countering the opponent's first. And then Metalwork Colossus we can play for pretty cheap as it gets a discount for each non-creature artifact we control equal to its mana value. And then the next section is Interaction, ways to deal with opposing creatures, where we have Spell Bomb to bounce an opposing creature, great synergy with Emery if we can keep getting it back from the graveyard over and over again. There's Sky Sovereign as a vehicle that can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks, can even surprise, kind of put it in play with Joyra to maybe ambush the opponent. There's River's Rebuke to bounce all their non-land permanents back, Meteor Golem to destroy any non-land permanent when it enters, and then a Shatter Skull Smashing can also be played as a land or as a removal spell. Then the next section are ways to kind of abuse Joyra. We've got Corridor Monitor, a 1 4 that when it enters the battlefield can untap an artifact or creature we control. So if we get to play Joyra on turn 2, untap with her turn 3, we can activate, get to Ingenuity Counters, maybe putting in a Corridor Monitor, which can now untap Joyra, so we can activate her once again and already maybe put a 4 mana artifact in play for free. So that's the powerful synergy with Monitor, and with Vizier of Tumbling Sands, which can be cycled for 1 and a blue to draw a card and untap target permanence, so that can also untap Joyra. And then a Lithoform engine can be very fun if we get it going to copy activated or triggered abilities, can copy instant or sorceries, and for 4 mana if we tap it we can copy target permanent spell, so if we cast maybe an artifact or a creature we can copy it while it's on the stack. And then a Time Warp to take an extra turn, always powerful in any blue deck. And Paradox Engine, probably the most powerful card in the deck. If we get to untap with it alongside some ramp artifacts, we can quickly go off. Also great synergy with Joyra, as we can maybe untap her multiple times to put additional artifacts in play for free. And then we have a few ways to copy our artifacts with Sculpting Steel. And then Phyrexian Metamorph we can also cast for 3 mana if we're willing to pay 2 life to the Phyrexian mana and can copy any creature or artifact on the battlefield including the opponent's stuff. And then we've got a few artifact lands with Treasure Vault, Darksteel Citadel and the tapped Silver Bluff Bridge. And then some additional utility lands include a Labyrinth to shut down opposing creatures so it can also be useful interaction. Good Inventor's Fair to gain life eventually maybe tutor up a powerful artifact like Paradox Engine. We've got Crawling Barons as a creature land alongside Blink Moth Nexus, which is also an artifact. Buried Ruin can get back an artifact from our graveyard. And then a Crucible and Soaring City as additional channel lands. And we actually have quite a few legendary creatures to give those a discount. And Hall of the Storm Giants as our final creature land. So that's a reason to sometimes play Mountain on turn 1 instead of Island, in case we top deck Hall on turn 2. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. And we've got a promising hand, especially Monitor, very synergistic with the Joyra. And uh, hopefully Orvar doesn't have too many answers to turn to Joyra. 
island I don't necessarily need to keep on top. We're just looking for a juicy, maybe 4 mana artifact. A Ledger Shredder, that's fine. Okay, so activate Jora, play Monitor. Could also put in a Treasure Vault here, that sounds appealing. And then Monitor. Untaps Jora. Can put in a Bank Buster. And then draw with Bank Buster as well. And next turn put in a Godfather Statue. That's going to be back breaking. Alright, sadly a raven form hits Jora. So, I wouldn't be able to cheat in Godfaro statue, but we're not too far from just casting it. Thanks to the treasure vault being uh, put in play here. So, end of turn we draw. And, um, yeah, we could play. Jora once again, although at this point Weaponsmith might just be better. And I'll hang on to Foundry, just play this tapped on blue. Do we want a Dreamstone? Yeah, it's not bad. And then pass it back. Now we do potentially have to worry about counter spells, which we could avoid with Joyra. Okay. So yeah, if we're afraid of a counter spell, we can maybe bait it out with a Dreamstone, and if it resolves, we can still easily cast something afterwards. That resolves. Okay, so in that case, replay Jora. Launcher Shredder triggers. And Jora, they're gonna counter. Fair enough. Can put it on library. That way, we don't have to pay the commander tax. And play Foundry as well. Not too far from setting up a powerful Rise and Shine. Opponent goes with Orvar and one mana available. So they could still have an answer to Jora. Put it in hand. So if I play the statue first, then they won't be able to counter Jora anymore. And they won't be able to counter statue for single blue. Alright, a rookie mistake triggering Orvar. To copy Lunger Shredder. And then now can draw with our Bank Buster. Find Elixir, which I can still play. Seems better than Joyra. Opponent does get to connive a bunch. And then Foundry is a nice mana sink. Opponent getting rid of all their expensive cards. They won't be able to play now with that. Statues in play. And Mountain we can bottom. Okay. So how does uh, Kicked Rise and Shine look next turn? Can turn all our non-creature artifacts into 4-4s. Four yeah, we've got a bunch of those. Midnight Clock. So, yeah, how about we just overload this? And then we want to try and keep as many artifacts untapped as possible. Ok, 
Okay. Can go for an all-out attack. Opponent does get to double block Godfarrow's statue, which we may want to avoid. So maybe attack with all but statue. Unless it's lethal, opponent's got two blockers. Let's say they go double block statue. They're still taking 12, 16, 17, 18, 19. Not quite lethal. So I think we hang on to statue, send in the rest. Put on double blocks, Hedron, and then tempted to just kill the mirror, just so they don't get to make more mana with it, so they can cast a big comeback spell like maybe a river's rebuke, which is my main concern. Points at eight. We gain two, opponent loses one. Shocking Grasp to cover a Ledger Shredder once again, but our opponent's now pretty much tapped out. And they still seem dead on board. Four blockers. And yeah, we've got more than enough here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Kyodai, so a five-color deck, and our hand's promising. Got some fun artifacts to put in play with Joyra, including Engine and Self-Replicator. And I could play the bridge, I could put it in play with Joyra as a form of ramp. I think we have enough artifacts where I'll just play it now. And especially if they end up killing Joyra, I want to get the tap land out of the way. Druid class, okay. Could be an enchantment synergy deck. The uh, Weaponsmith is also quite tempting here, but I think we'll still go with uh, Jora. And then next turn just cast Weaponsmith, put in Ornithopter. And then we'll be able to get our engines going. Put in a leveling up Druid class to play an extra land. Okay, maybe a Gate synergy, a ramp deck here. Play Weaponsmith, and pass a turn. We'll be able to play pretty cheap Colossus once we play Engine and Nettlesist. Fable. And then we can start thinking about what to copy with a Lithoform Engine. If we can cast a very cheap Colossus, copying that would be fun. For now, put in Ornithopter. And then now we can put in Lithoform Engine. And uh, then we'll still have 6-7 mana to cast artifacts. So I could just cast a Metal War Colossus already. Is that a move? Or do we try and copy it with our Lithoform engine? Which we could probably do next turn. And then for now, can play a Nettle Cyst. And yeah, we can even copy the Nettle Cyst with engine right now, so let's do that. Can use Weaponsmith either to cast or to use the ability here. Okay, double Nettle Cyst, pair of 5-5s, five and next turn play essentially a free Colossus after playing Foundry, and we can copy that with our engine. Can put in the Replicator with Jura potentially. Got some blockers for the Goblin Shaman token, although they could make it indestructible with Kyodai just to keep making treasure. All right. And a Paradox Engine. Okay, um, yeah, that should be pretty strong. Put in Paradox Engine. And there's probably some sort of infinite combo with both engines here.
but I'm just gonna copy Colossus, float some mana, untap everything, and we could have, I guess, copied the spell once again before it resolved to get a third Colossus. Because, yeah, we untapped the engine with the original Colossus still on the stack. So there's a lot going on here, as you can tell. But uh, just keep making some more mana. Cast our Replicator to untap with engine. Copy with Lithoform engine. Uh, so, yeah, that happens. Untap. Pay four. Copy the replicator. And uh, yeah, I guess that's not a bad turn. But probably could have optimized it even more. Can also use the engine to copy Paradox engine triggers so we can untap our stuff several times. Although we don't have that many like mana artifacts that we get to abuse. Next turn, cast Foundry and trigger Replicators a bunch. Could have also maybe copied the Replicators trigger with the engine instead of paying four to copy Replicators. So, again, lots of things we could be doing. Opponent could also be setting up a Sweeper here, which would be awkward. But at least we keep Nettle Cysts and our engines. Zero points at nine, facing pretty large army. And a river's rebuke. That's even worse than a, a sweeper here. Bounces everything. Yeah, and uh, can't really use Jora either. So that's very sad. Back to the Stone Ages. Yeah, that was probably the worst case scenario. And they only had the blue thanks to the Shaman. So now we gotta rebuild, but we're incredibly far behind. So I guess step one, Weaponsmith plus Jora. Discard to hand size. And uh, what do we get rid of? Maybe Foundries, just too cute. At least Paradox Engine plus Jora helps us rebuild pretty quickly. So we'll just soak up some damage. And Escape Shifts. Uh oh. What's her opponent gonna get? Maybe a Maze's End to win with the gates? And yeah, opponent keeps all their gates in play. Baldur's Gates. So no Maze's End, but Baldur's Gate can make a lot of mana. Alrighty, so step one is to try and get engine in play. Although I wouldn't be able to untap anything if I just cast it here. Um, so I might as well play Signet first and then I can still play engine. And Jora can put maybe an Ornithopter in play as well. Okay. Pass it back. I guess if Jora put in play Signet, then I would have been able to play Paradox Engine and still cast a 2-drop to untap Jora and use Jora again. So you actually messed up here. Since we drew the Signet, that kind of changed how we should have played that turn. Oh, opponent's got a lot of mana. Goes for a big score.
and sees the spoils, digs pretty deep. Next turn we can probably still combo off with Jora and put a bunch of stuff in play. So we'll be maybe back where we started four turns ago. Opponent's making a lot of treasure in the meantime. They could start pumping Kyodai as well to deal extra damage. Alright, let's put in Ornithopter. And then step one, activate Joyra. Put in a Lithoform engine. And now a Soaring City could finally be a way of bouncing the Shaman. If that's what we're interested in. Okay, float some mana. And then we can cast a zero mana Metalwork Colossus. So that resolves. Then the Paradox Engine trigger to untap. And now we actually have four mana to copy the trigger again. Okay, so we get another Metal War Colossus. And uh, yeah, that's probably it in terms of Colossus. Next, I can cast Trophy Mage. Copy that a bunch. Could activate Jora without putting anything in play just to get more counters on it, I suppose. But the plan is to cast Trophy Mage. Untap some stuff. Copy Trophy Mage. With Engine. And I'm keeping the spells in hand mostly so we can potentially trigger engine more with it. Sculpting Steel can not copy any of our legendaries, but could copy, let's say, a Nettle Cyst as well. Tome of the Infinite goes pretty infinite with uh, Paradox Engine as well, so that sounds good. And uh, Sculpting Steel, sure. Embarrassment of Riches. And actually I might play Soaring City. That way we can put in Tomb of the Infinite. Get a one mana spell and untap everything once again. Duress. Don't mind if I do. Alright, so... Our deck's going off. Paradox Engine, pretty busted card. Can certainly make arguments for banning it. But for now, we're recovering from a River's Rebuke, so I'm here for it. And uh, don't think I need to copy with Engine, we'll just let this slide. Take a Blood out to Sky, would have destroyed all our permanents as well. Although they can also get it back out of the graveyard with Scab. But yeah, let's have some more fun with our uh, Tomb of the Infinites. Find another Duress. Just cast it to make more mana. Maybe I should actually put in a Sculpting Steel. Just so we can generate more mana. Copy Signets. Paradox Engine untaps. Don't see anything. Activate Tomb of the Infinites. 
Mm, yeah, we can keep comboing. Exile all the opponent stuff. In response to the engine, make more mana. And I can copy the sword's trigger as well. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, we were gonna be able to pretty much get all the spells off our Tome of the Infinite here and cast them as many times as possible, including a Lightning Bolt, which can eventually deal three to our opponent to finish them off. So we actually assembled an infinite combo here in more than one way. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Veto, Mono Black, a Life Gain deck, and our hand seems promising. Corridor Monitor, great combo with Joyra. We'll scry towards more lands, although Tazeret's difficult to turn down. Sure, we'll keep Tazeret. Might be a little bit greedy, but Mind Stone gets us to 3 mana, can scry with Maze Mind Tome a bunch, and hopefully Jora survives. A rat Colony, ooh, is our opponent a Rat Colony deck? Okay, so Jora put in Corridor Monitor. Activate Jora again, could put in Metamorph Copying Monitor. Although it's not like we need six counters this turn on Joyra, so might be better off putting in Mindstone. And then we can play a one mana Emery and play Maze Mind Tomb. And that can scry twice here between now and our upkeep to find another island. Opponent playing another colony in the meantime, although Monitor can block. And a Sulfur Falls will do. Alrighty. So I can play Tazeret. That will mean we won't be able to get a discount on Tome since we tapped Mindstone. Alternatively, can do something with a Metamorph. Uh, in the graveyard, there's a deck of many things and a mirror. Deck of many things sounds fun. And I can cast it if I copy Mindstone with Metamorph. So, cast our deck of many things. And pass. Fine to trade monitor, since we can just get it back with Emery. And then we've got a ton of card draw engines between Tome, Deck, Tazeret, and Reality Chip being reconfigured. So I'm okay aggressively scrying with Tome just to make sure we smooth out our next couple draws. So more than happy to trade. And then Corridor Monitor plus Emery is also a pretty fun combo. Tome of the Infinite. Oh boy. I don't think we need more card draw engines, but would have been fun. And then upkeep, I'll scry again. And yeah, Karn's also good. Can make some large Karnstruct tokens. Is that what we want? Can play Corridor Monitor. Yeah, I guess we'll keep Karn. Fine. We can... Replay, monitor, untapping, mindstone. And then still play Karn, minus two. And then Jora can put in reality chip. And then next turn at some point we'll start drawing with our various artifacts as well. And then Tezret to boot onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Tybalt, Wicked Tormentor. Our hand's missing red, so I don't think I can keep, sadly. This is better. So we've got Jora cheating in a Mind Stone. That way we can actually cast a 4-drop on uh, turn 3. As Mind Stone will make an extra mana. 
So we can cast Padim, keep key in hand to put in play with Jora, perhaps. Hoping she survives. So far, so good. Curse of Hospitality is acceptable. Alright, well, let's enact our plan here. And then I think I like Padim, and then next turn maybe play second Joyra. As Padim has a bit more toughness here, more likely to survive. Zariel can make devils. Padim draws an extra card. Okay, so we're already going off here. Can put in key to the archive with Joyra. It's not gonna draw off Weatherlight Captain since it's only when we cast. But we'll see which spell we get from the uh, spellbook. Counter spell, Electrolyze, Doomblade. All seem quite lovely. Um, probably can beat the original. And then uh, discard. Doesn't matter too much, Island. And then if I wanna play Weatherlight Captain, wouldn't be able to keep up Counterspell. So what if we play Celestis, keep up Counterspell instead? That seems decent. Soaring City, also very cheap to channel. And I'll hang on to Metamorph, can maybe put that in play with um, Joyra as well. And then we'll attack Zariel for one. Your death has now become a I'm okay with them hitting us with a curse here. Counter Tibalts. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Boros Feather deck. And my hands has potential, but would prefer a couple more uh, expensive artifacts to cheat and play with Jora, And this will do. So turn to Jora, can put in an Artificer. And then we wouldn't mind drawing another 3-drop, for instance, that we can cast. Colossus will get a discount from Mystic Forge, and Mystic Forge is a great source of card advantage. Playing a turn 2 Artificer would set up turn 3 Forge, but I think Jora is going to have highest upside if she sticks around. Put in place Feather, and that will draw cards with Tome of Legends, and there's Reality Chip. So we could put in chip and uh, reconfigure it onto Joyra. I think I'm gonna prefer waiting on that and uh, play Artificer and then put in Reality Chip at instant speed so we don't expose it to removal. Feather attacks. And there's the first of many pump spells. Take up the shield for a plus one counter and lifelink. And that's fine. As long as they're not killing our stuff. Untap. So Jora can put in Mystic Forge. We see a spell bomb on top, which is also a clean answer to Feather potentially. And a Labyrinth could also be quite useful. So for now, how about we put in a Mystic Forge. Also drew an Artifact Land, which we can cheat and play with Joyra. We're not too far from casting Colossus, but I think I like reconfiguring a Reality Chip. And then we can play a Spell Bomb. In multiple ways here, with both Mystic Forge and Reality Chip. Probably should have waited, but that's okay, since Padim we wouldn't have been able to play with Mystic Forge. 
but I think I do like keeping it on top. And then Spell Bomb we can use to bounce Feather. They could have a protection spell here. Um, probably fine to let them untap. And then in response to a pump spell, we can maybe bounce and then make them use their mana to protect Feather. Right, crucible channeled for added pressure. And then now we want to probably bounce before Tome of Legends picks up another counter. Alright, that works. So now they can't even replay Feather this turn. Antiquities War on top can cast that thanks to Reality Chip. So Jura wouldn't be able to put in Colossus because its mana value is still 11. But Antiquities War can maybe find another expensive artifact. So let's try that. Wish I could cast this Foundry before Antiquities triggers. Since we could use Artificer, but not gonna get the chance. And then we can still play our bridge. Labyrinth will also be a nice answer to Feather. And how about a Godfaro statue? Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Opponent draws with Tomb. Sheltering lights, just to get to scry while they still can. And then we can still play Soaring City as our land drop. Play a zero mana Metal War Colossus, because why not? Can get rid of Blink Moth with Mystic Forge to keep digging and pass it back. Well, that was a pretty good turn, I would say. Can even protect our statue with Padim, giving it Hexproof next turn. And there's a 5 mana Feather. Okay. Well, how about a Metamorph? Play land for free. Lotus we can play. And then Jora can put in deck of many things. Metamorph is 3 mana if we pay 2 life. And what do we want to copy? I guess uh, Metal War Colossus. It's pretty good since statue is legendary. Could also go for another forge. So copy Colossus. Make another 10-10. I can uh, maybe get rid of Treasure Vault. Find a Tomb. Can cast that and still put in Deck of Many Things. Or we can activate Deck of Many Things, I think. This is okay for now. And then another Jora. We're uh, happy to keep on top, I think. Colossus hit for 10. And then starting next turn I might have to keep up a Labyrinth so we don't randomly die to Feather getting pumped. Didn't end up casting Padim, so we now don't have Hexproof for Artifact. But by putting all these cheap Artifacts in play we're also setting up our Antiquities War. Although, funnily enough, it's gonna shrink down our Metal War Colossus down to a 5-5. Is there maybe a sweeper incoming? Zoom draws. And an hour of revelation, wow. Destroy all non-land permanents. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Okay, that's a good reset button. Alright, so the game continues, I guess. Um, play Joyra and just a tap land and pass. And then we can draw off Padim and our commander. I was definitely not expecting an Hour of Revelation. Not sure how we would have really played around it, though. I guess I should not have 
activated Jora main phase to put in a deck of many things. Or opponent putting a counter on Jora so they can maybe Valor stance and kill it. Yep. Alright. That's another sent back. Ooh, Lithoform Engine. That's a fun one. So we can play Padim and still play Engine. That seems fine. And then we'll control the largest artifact so Padim can draw. And I'm not gonna get back Metalwork Losses just yet. And then what do we want to do with Lithoform Engine? I guess copy some of our artifacts we play, perhaps. Some would sprint to Haste Feather, so that's gonna deal quite a bit of damage now, so we'll have to hang on to Labyrinth for protection. Could also copy Padim's card draw with a Lithoform Engine trigger, potentially. Opponent going all in, hitting us for 9. Alright. Well, as long as they only have a single creature, Labyrinth can stop Feather from killing us. So their opponent gets all their spells back. Alright, so I think we copy the Padim trigger. Just to make sure we get value out of our engine. So we draw two. Ooh, Meteor Golem. That's interesting. Now, we still have to watch out for a Hasty Feather killing us, so a Labyrinth might still be necessary to keep up. It's gonna cost us four mana, so two mana left. Not really enough to do anything significant. We can get back an artifact out of our graveyard as well. But yeah, I think we just have to pass. Opponent's just getting the scry value to maybe look for another creature to haste. And even something like a God's Willing wouldn't be able to help them here. Ooh, but a Chandra Awakened Inferno certainly does. Yeah, that's just gonna plus two. And the emblems are slowly gonna kill us here. Yeah, that's rough. Well, that was a powerful one-two punch, wiping the board and then Hasty Feather into a Chandra. We'll just take our draw steps since we'll need our mana to figure a way out. We're at two. And uh, I can Meteor Golem, destroy Chandra, but then we won't have the mana to deal with Feather. Unless I guess we copy the trigger with Lithoform Engine, but now opponents got take up the shield, which can make Feather indestructible. I guess we'll hope for them to not see the line of protecting uh, Feather, but it's a bit of a long shot. Copy the trigger. Kill Feather, and even if they didn't have the indestructible, they could still probably replay it and give it haste. Alright, that's a shame. Yeah, if it weren't for Chandra, this uh, Labyrinth would have kept us alive for a while, but our opponent does get to scry several times until they eventually find another creature that they can pump. Yeah, Feather is a good commander, but uh, the MVP this game was definitely the Hour of Revelation. Alright, GG's. Hey, at least I tried.
and Feather can cross the finish line. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Tatiova, Steward of Tides, so blue-green ramp. And what do we think of this hand? Can cheat in some of our artifact lands, draw with Witching Well. Yeah, I guess it's fine. And then Reality Chip, another good mana sink. Opponent probably doesn't have a ton of interaction. And then turn one, go with a Witching Well. Try and scry into some more expensive artifacts that we can cheat and play with Joyra. Well, let's cry. And a Paradox Engine sounds lovely. So we get to resolve Jura. Opponent ramping with an Into the North. So we'll put in Darksteel Citadel. I can play a land still. Ooh, and a Corridor Monitor. So I guess we put in the Corridor Monitor. Activate again. And now I put in a land, I suppose. Play Reality Chip and Spell Bomb, or we can draw with Witching Well and then keep our spells to maybe trigger Paradox Engine. That seems better. So we're weirdly out ramping the ramp deck for now by putting in lands with Joyra. But that's probably not going to last for long. Alright, Cosima can provide extra card advantage here. Although we can maybe bounce her with a spell bomb. Ooh, Jingataxius. Okay. So now what? I can put in Paradox Engine. And then cast something, put in something else with Jora. Our goal should be to cast Jingataxius as soon as possible. If I put in Mindstone, I have 5 mana. Probably still better to play the engine itself. And then, yeah, opponent already concedes here. Paradox engine, known to be very powerful. So how would this turn kind of pan out if we go through it? I could cast, let's say, Mindstone first, since that synergizes with engine. Untap Jora. Jora can put in maybe a reality chip. We can reconfigure a reality chip. And then uh, activate Jora again. And then next turn, if we put an Ornithopter with Mindstone, we should be able to maybe cast Jingataxius, and then Jingataxius copying cards like Aether Spellbomb. It's going to be quite effective. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Florian, a Red Black, and our hand is a little bit light on artifacts, so Weaponsmith and Jora wouldn't be doing much. So despite Time War being a great combo with Jingitaxius, I think we take a Mulligan. Okay, this is better. And then Mechanaut seems decent, it gives us a 2 mana discount for Thought Monitor. But step 1, Joyra, and hope she survives. And then next turn we could put in Mechanaut. Play a 1 mana tome and activate it. Although now we could have an even crazier turn with the uh, reality chip as well. So do we chip, tome, and then next turn play a very cheap thought monitor? Yeah, that seems fine. Simulacrum on top as well. So don't need to scry that away, since we can put it in play for free with Joyra. So despite our opponent having the turn 2 Signet, we're out valuing them, at least early on. Okay, so activate Joyra, put in Solemn, play a 2-mana Thought Monitor, 
And then we can still draw with Tome, and our opponent's already packing it up here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Shieldred, which can be a pretty tough matchup, as uh, we don't have a ton of answers to it, and we tend to draw a lot of cards. So, we need a good hand. This hand is unable to play Joyra, although it does have some pretty busted cards with Engine and Time Warp. So maybe it's still worth keeping. We're on the draw, so we might find red in time. And against Mono Black, they'll probably have some cheap removal for Jora anyways. Alright, still gonna give it a try. Should have played Mountain in case we draw our uh, blue creature lands, but didn't get punished. So play Jora, probably see removal. And then next turn we can play Tomb and Scry. Gonna be a Thought Seize instead. Well, might go after a Paradox Engine or Time Warp. At least we might get to untap with Jora. And Arcane Signets, pretty nice too. Can put that in play now to cast Weatherlight Captain, hoping there's no Sweeper. Yeah, let's do it. And then we actually have the Buried Ruin to get back Paradox Engine eventually. So I'll keep that in hand so we don't expose it to. Potential Field of Ruin. Alright, double Joyra in play. Let's see if we get to untap with him. Opponent goes for Shieldred, which of course punishes Weatherblind Captain drawing extra cards. But we get to do some powerful things in the meantime. Maybe just casting the Tome to draw off Weatherlight Captain, or do we already want to take an extra turn and then put Tome in play with Joyra? Where does that lead us, is the question. I think just casting Tome is fine, and then hope to draw into an expensive artifact to put in play with our innovator. Just a land. I guess we could already bury Ruin back Paradox Engine, and then put it in play for free next turn. Sure. But yeah, the Shieldred triggers add up very quickly. Opponent hangs back, we will uh, activate Buried Ruin, getting back Paradox Engine. Do I want to scry with Tome is a question. Alright, they had a cut down as well, so we wouldn't be able to put anything in play for free. But we can still just cast the Paradox Engine. Don't think I need to scry. Just yet. Let's just cast Engine. Crushing Disappointment. Okay. Fine, Sculpting Steel. Now I might want to start tapping the Tome to eventually gain life as well. Signets, five mana left. And a Grim Tutor, okay. Might take another hand disruption spell to take Time Warp. Or maybe a combo piece to kill us next turn. So, probably can give our opponent another turn with Shieldred out. Deck of many things doesn't help me. I guess it could get back Time Warp to set up some interesting loops. Although I don't think we really have the time to use it. So up keeps crying again. Bottom islands. Metamorph could also copy Maze Mind Tome to gain more life. Probably need to time warp. But we're not making a ton of progress. I guess I can draw with a uh, Tome here, just to gain four. Or we can keep it as something to copy. Since I don't have anything otherwise. Antiquities War. Could maybe find an answer to Shieldred's. I guess we'll start there.
Thunder Ornithopter. And finds a Retrofitter Foundry. Don't think that's gonna cut it. Can essentially play it for free, thanks to our Signet, but the two life just hurts so much. Alright, Shatter Skull Smashing could kill Shieldred, but we're probably gonna die before we get a chance. Is it worth it to copy Tome here? Sure. Use Sculpting Steel. And then we should tap this in response. So now I can gain four just by scrying. Ether spell bomb, that's what we needed. Okay. So I can cast Ornithopter, draw spell bomb, play spell bomb. And then the Signet will let us sacrifice it. We'll gain four life. And I'll start scrying with a second tome as well now. So we can eventually gain four more. Rise and Shine could be a win condition, although we already have Antiquity sticking up. Don't think that's good enough. Okay, draw down to five. And then uh, we can actually sacrifice Ornithopter of Paradise with the uh, Foundry, funnily enough, to make a 4-4. Okay, so we can bounce Shieldred now. I guess we'll wait for them to make a move. I can jump with Ornithopter and then use the Retrofitter Foundry, turn it into a 4-4. And then we can bounce shield at end of turn, so we have a turn of reprieve. Opponent passes. Bounce shield red. And now is the time to draw cards. Solemn, I don't need. Do I scry again? Sure. Not even sure what I'm looking for. Guardian Idols, not bad with the uh, Paradox Engine. And we found a Midnight Clock. It's kind of risky with Shieldreds. I'll just go with uh, Treasure Vault. Okay, so play Treasure Vaults. Can play Guardian Idol as step one. So now we can generate two mana with each spell we cast. Shimmer Dragons, kind of interesting too. Could maybe copy Arcane Signets. And I'll pay two life to do it. Jingataxius, okay. That's quite promising too. So a three mana. Can play Jin. And then uh, take it from there. That resolves. Now, I guess we're out of spells to cast. Uh, smashing for zero essentially nuts me one mana, 
with our three artifacts. Um, probably better to just draw with two at that point. Okay, end of the line, hit for seven. And now we've got a Jin in play to maybe counter a big finisher that the opponent has. It's gonna be a shield red, five mana left. And we get to untap. So we go to five. And then our Antiquities War also happens. So we've got a lot of creatures. Are they enough for lethal is a question. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, sure seems like it. And we get to copy our smashing with Jenga Taxius. So X equals three should be enough to clear Shieldred. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Wow. What a close matchup here. I'm sure our opponent had a peer into the abyss or something similar in hand, which would have killed us if Shieldred was still in play. So finding that Aether Spellbomb at the last second was exactly what we needed. So yeah, we got to see our Blue Rat Joyra deck in action, and Joyra can definitely lead to some very explosive starts if you've got those early mana artifacts, even the artifact lands are also quite synergistic, and if you get an early mana advantage in Historic Brawl, that's an easy way to run away with the game. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.